Hey kids, what's up? We're on our way to a gig tonight at the Clarion Airport. And it looks to me like there's a crowd of about, I don't know, 230 people or something like that. So it should be a pretty, pretty good group. You know, I've decided to do this gig log a little differently. I've had some problems uh, with my agency. Good people, but they've made a lot of mistakes lately. I've been doing free wedding ceremonies and extra time. This is an extra time gig. And I think the big argument a lot of times is, well, you know, it's a tough economy. People don't have a lot of money, so we got to bend. Well, let me just take you inside and show you a few things. All right, first of all, notice they've got some pretty extravagant floral here. That was not cheap. I can tell you right now, that was not a cheap date. And all the tables are custom dressed. And I'll show you more when we get inside. Here's the inside of the hall. I want you to notice that every chair in here has custom chair covers, black and white, to match the linens on the table, plus ribbons. There's floral on every table. And every table has different floral as well. It's all custom stuff. And look how many chairs there are. There's dinner for $2.25, folks. Look, there's, there's custom backdrops back there with up lighting. And I don't know what the price on chair covers are, but I've heard anywhere between yeah, $5 all the way up to $15, $18 a piece. Why don't you DJs let us know how much chair covers are in your neck of the woods? But yeah, I mean, it's just not even a valid criticism that money's tight. Because as you can see, they've spent some money tonight. I think it did a pretty good job on this room considering it's awful small. It could have been a lot bigger and a lot more grand if I would have known a little more about what was going on with the client. If I would have had the opportunity to consult, we could have really done something cool. We could have brought the dance floor closer. We could have done a lot of uplighting in this room. Look how big it is. We, we could have made some money here, guys. I'm not trying to beat this one into the ground. I just want to make the point that things aren't always as they seem. I was in the car business, and in the car business, I found that most of the people who were dishonest were the customers, not the salespeople. The customers were very on guard. They didn't want to spend more money than they had to on anything. So your job as a car salesperson was to build value in the vehicle and value in the services you can offer the client after they purchase the vehicle. And value is money. But it's a defense mechanism. People have been screwed. They feel like, well, I don't want someone to take more money from me than uh, is necessary for any given product or service. And that's very valid. I'm the same way. So it's our job as salespeople and uh, agents or whatever your job might be to build value in the service and the product. I am the service and the product in this case. So I feel like it's my agent's job to build value in me. And then I can take that and ask them intelligent questions and give them answers. I don't want to give too much away initially because then I've, I've given away, I guess, my expertise that I should be charging for. But uh, yeah, initially I feel like an introduction is necessary. And Peter Mary and I were talking about this. Peter wrote a book called The Best Wedding Reception Ever. He's a DJ in Orange County, California who charges $5,000 per event. He asked me, why do you like to use agents, Brian? And I told him, well, I want an introduction to me. I don't want to talk about myself. I want to answer questions, ask questions, and put together events. But I don't want to tell people how great I am. I feel like that's better for someone else to do. Uh, it's always better hearing it from anybody, a third person, how great something is. If I stood here and told you how great I was, you'd think I was kind of a douchebag. So that's why I like to use an agent. Then it gives me time to do other things. But, uh, but yeah, th that's it. I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I feel like that I am a very good value. And if my agent wants to sit down and talk about the kind of things that I can offer, like consults and the music that I can offer, my experience, my expertise, and maybe some floor planning, all kinds of stuff, I'd be happy to do it. Anyway, let's get on with the gig log. So here we are, full house, we've done grand entrance and speeches, now we just have four separate buffet lines going with a huge staff serving up food. Alright, dinner's over, I've done some Taylor House, met some really nice people, they got the uh, buffet cleared, probably going to take a few minutes to get cake served, and then we'll get things started, I would guess in about 15-20 minutes. Alright, we just did a first dance, now we're doing a wedding party dance. 
we're gonna kick things off a little James Brown this time around. It's been a big request. So yeah, stay tuned. Alright, got a nice full dance floor. I think we're gonna have a good night tonight. People wanna get up and dance. Alright, James Brown, big request.
quarter after 11. Eleven twenty-two. It's, it's no, it's over. It's over. So there's a gig log for you. I think I was being hard on myself earlier because I passed out a lot of cards. I must have done something right tonight. I think I expect to keep the dance floor packed all the time, and when I don't, I, I am disappointed in myself. But the fact of the matter was, there were a lot of distractions, places to smoke. There was a bar in the hotel. People were in and out of hotel rooms. So I think all in all, I actually did okay. Um, one last thing about things aren't always as they seem as far as what the client was actually spending on stuff. I found out that facade behind the head table, well, that along with the black ribbons that were on top of the table, they spent $750 on the facade and black ribbons on the top of the table. It was a package deal. And they were lit up with light bulbs from probably Home Depot, just floodlights. Nothing LED, no color changers, just white lights. We could have done a better job than that, a lot cheaper with uh, our LED stuff. But anyway, it is what it is. I won't say any more about it. <laughs> and then, I, last thing I want to say, a lot of you kids, after I do these gig logs, will say, well, what song was it at 2.30? Or what song was it at, at 4.26? Or whatever the case might be. Do yourselves a favor. Before you ask what song anything is, go to mobilebeat.com, look at the Mobile Beat Top 200, and go through songs that aren't familiar to you and look them up on YouTube and just listen to them because you need to know this stuff if you're going to be a DJ. That's it. I'm going home. I'm beat. Practice and enjoy.